اقرا وخيم ورتل القران اصبح بصوتك اسمع الاكوان السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى والتقون يا أولي الألباب وقال تعالى ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا وقال تعالى والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم لذي حج فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حج لله فلم يرفث ولم يفسق رجع كيوم ولدته أمه وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من لم يمنعه من الحج حاجة ظاهرة أو سلطان جائر أو مرض حابس فمات ولم يحج فليمت إن شاء يهوديا وإن شاء نصرانيا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله المولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most magnificent, our Lord, our creator, our sustainer, our nourisher. And we bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide him, and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, none can guide him. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the accursed, and from the evils of our own souls. We are nearing the days of the month of Dhul Hijjah and the month of Dhul Hijjah is obviously the month wherein the Hajj takes place and so these days, the days of Hajj are very blessed days in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only for those who are performing the Hajj obviously for those uh, brothers and sisters that are traveling to perform the Hajj it will be a spiritual journey, it will be a journey that will uh, you know, change their lives and be a some, once in a lifetime uh, type of journey but for even us for those of us who have stayed back and that's the majority of us who are not going to be performing the Hajj it is very important to know that these days are still very beneficial and very meritorious in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we shouldn't have the attitude that yes Hajj is going on but since I'm not going there or since I'm not taking part in the Hajj this year let me just you know, you know, not pay attention to it, or not involve myself in any act, in any, any, in any, uh, uh, you know, optional acts of ibadah. You know, let me just let it slide. Eid comes, goes, no big deal. But in reality, in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not only for the hujjaj, but for everyone, for every Muslim, these ten days are days of spirituality, days of great benefit in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And if we look throughout the year in the life of a Muslim, in the Islamic calendar of the Muslim. There is days throughout the Islamic calendar with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an opportunity to reap rewards or to reap or to gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean just in a week you look at the day of Friday, it's a blessed day, it's a day wherein there is an hour which in all du'as are accepted you look at the night, any night of any given day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of every believing person that makes dua before the Fajr time comes in. Uh, you look at the month of Ramadan throughout the year, the month of Ramadan, a very special month, uh, a month of worship, a month of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a month of rahmah, a month of forgiveness, a month of uh, freeing ourselves from the fire of Jahannam. Then more specifically in the month of Ramadan, the last 10 days being uh, of special virtue. And then within the last 10 days of Ramadan, specifically the night of Laylatul Qadr being a night of virtue, a night of forgiveness. Uh, and then you move on and you find the sixth fast of Shawwal, uh, you know, equaling the whole year of fasts in reward uh, in, in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you find these first 10 days 
of the month of Dhul Hijjah. So throughout the year, it's almost uh, like when a person looks at maybe a school calendar or the regular calendar that we use, uh, we see every few weeks there's a vacation. So there's Thanksgiving, there's Labor Day, there's Memorial Day, uh, there's Christmas, and every few weeks, every month or so, uh, there's a vacation or a few days off uh, maybe just to give uh, you know the workers or people that uh, work and people that go to school some days off but religiously and spiritually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same manner has placed days without the year in which there are extra uh, blessings and there are days which in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and there are days which in uh, your rewards are multiplied multifold so these days are for us to look out for and from amongst these days are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, in the beginning of Surah Al Fajr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath by the first 10 days uh, and uh, first 10 nights actually. And according to some uh, scholars of the Quran, they say these 10 days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken an oath on, these are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And when, some, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath, in the Arabic language, when someone takes an oath, it's to denote that something, there's something of great value. Someone's taken an oath on something. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in places in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath on certain things. So in the beginning of Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath on four things. Wal-Fajr, by the break of dawn. Walayalin ashr and by the ten nights. Wal-Shaf'i wal-Watr, by the odd and the even. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرُ And the night when the night passes. هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَسْمٌ لِذِي حِجْرٌ Is there not enough evidence for those people who have intellect that is there not enough signs, enough evidence that this is the true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grabs our attention in the beginning of Surah Al-Fajr and in the second ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرَ By the ten nights. And so according to some scholars of the Qur'an these are the ten nights uh, which uh, the first 10 nights or the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah which we will start inshallah in a few days maybe a week or so inshallah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned about these 10 nights a hadith reported by Imam Bukhari the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there is no deed that is better in the sight of Allah there is no deed which is more rewarding in the sight of Allah more greatly rewarded than a good deed done in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah in the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah and so the Sahaba they asked O Prophet of Allah not even jihad meaning a person who gives his life and gives everything for the sake of Allah even that is not as rewarding as uh, the f actions done in the first 10 days and the Prophet Wasallam said not even jihad for the sake of Allah so a person who acts uh, you know who does good deeds in the first 10 days of Ramadan in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're so great even greater than striving in the path of Allah even greater than fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then said unless a man goes out for himself with himself taking his wealth and he doesn't come back with anything meaning he spent everything for the sake of Allah only that person is greater in reward in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah are very beneficial days, very spiritual days. Days that are days for us to fast in and do extra deeds and to pray in the masjid and to read Quran. Just like we up our actions in the month of Ramadan, these first 10 days are also uh, you know, for us to prepare or for us to uh, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now for those of us, obviously most of us aren't going for Hajj, a very beautiful point i just like to mention uh, that I heard from one of my teachers once. He once mentioned that the preparation for Hajj actually starts whenever a person wants. If you look into how to prepare for Hajj, you know, there's the education, perp the education aspect of learning actually how to perform the Hajj. Uh, then there's the mental aspect of actually getting ready. There's the financial aspect of saving up the money. Uh, there is uh, the physical aspect of getting in shape, Hajj isn't easy, a lot of walking, a lot of, you know, you're in the hot sun. Uh, and then there's the, the, the phase or the aspect of getting ready in regards to your paperwork, the visa, things that you need, the medical shots. All of these aspects are aspects that a person takes or t takes upon uh, in regards to preparing for Hajj when he's actually, you know, very, uh, has that niyyah, that intention that I'm going this year. So maybe a month before Hajj, a few months before Hajj, he'll choose the group, he'll go through the paperwork, get the shots, learn how to perform Hajj. You know, all of that, uh, that preparation is needed. 
But the point one of my teachers once made was that the actual spiritual preparation for Hajj starts when a person makes the niyyah in his heart that I want to go for Hajj. So a person makes the niyyah in his heart that, you know what, I want to perform the Hajj. And from that day he starts making dua that, oh Allah, give me the means, give me the financial means, give me the physical means, the health. Whatever I need, oh Allah, give me the means to perform Hajj. And oh Allah, expect, accept me to come to your house. Accept me to come and perform the Hajj. So the spiritual preparation for Hajj is whenever we actually want. When we actually make the decision in our heart that, you know what, I want to perform the Hajj, I'm going to make it something I want to do in the near future, then a person spiritually can start performing. So maybe most of us here aren't going for the Hajj this year, but for us to start our spiritual preparation, it's always there. And a hadith which is a warning, uh, it's a da'if hadith, a weak hadith in regards to its isnad, its chain of narration. But many scholars have mentioned it in regards to the warning for those who have the means to perform Hajj, but don't perform Hajj. Many of us are physically able, financially able, but there's nothing stopping us, but we're just delaying it. Maybe next year, maybe the year after, you know, when I get old, when we're waiting for something to happen. And so in, in the chapters of, uh, of Hadith, the scholars mention this, uh, this, this saying of the Prophet ﷺ in warning to those who don't hasten to perform Hajj, even though they have the means to do so. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned hadith reported by Imam Darmi in his book of Hadith. مَن مِنَ الْحَجِّ حَاجَّةٌ ظَاهِرَةٌ أو سُلْطَانٌ جَائِرٌ أو مَرَضٌ حابس. A person who has the, you know, complete, uh, he's uh, able to go to Hajj, there's no sickness that's stopping him, uh, there's no sultanun jair, there's no, you know, for example, you're not allowed to leave the country, then obviously you won't be able to perform the Hajj. Or there's no need that he has, there's something emergency that he can't, because of this emergency he can't go for Hajj. So for these reasons, maybe a person doesn't have a sickness, a person is allowed to leave the country, he's allowed to travel, a person has absolutely nothing stopping him from going for Hajj, but still doesn't perform the Hajj. And then coincidentally, he also passes away without performing the Hajj. As mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَاتَ وَلَمْ يَحُجَّ فَالْيَمُتْ إِنْ شَاءَ يَهُودِيَّ وَإِنْ شَاءَ نَصْرَانِيَّ He passes away without performing the Hajj. It's up to him. He could die as a Christian or he could die as a person of the Jewish faith. And so this was the warning of the Prophet ﷺ that if you are a Muslim, it's a part of our deen to make that preparation, to have that intention and to want to have that desire, that yearning in our hearts to go visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill, fulfill this obligation upon us. So now we have these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah in front of us. The question is, what do we do? What actions do I uh, involve myself in, in these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah? So firstly, is obviously if we're not going for Hajj, then to have that yearning in our heart, that desire in our heart. Maybe before we didn't have that deep burning desire to go for Hajj. But today, in these 10 days, make that intention that I will uh, start saving up for Hajj. Maybe have a different account or a different, uh, you know, a, a set of money that I will be saving up for my Hajj. Hajj is expensive. It's, and you know, nowadays you look at the groups and the prices, it's over $8,000, $9,000 per person to go for Hajj. So it's something that we need to save up for. If a person makes the niyyah and starts saving up, a few, maybe a hundred dollars a month, a few hundred dollars a month, whatever we can do to save up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making the hajj, this is that niyyah that we can do. That is, this is that preparation, that spiritual preparation in our heart that we can make. Secondly, what to do in these, in these first 10 days of the hijjah is to fast. Now these, fast, these, these nine days of the hijjah are very blessed like I mentioned. And fasting is an action which completely, you know, involves a person in ibadah. You know, a person may pray two rak'ah of salah. That two rak'ah maybe take him five, seven minutes. But if a person fasts, he's literally in ibadah of Allah the whole day. So a person fasts from dusk to dawn, he's in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to take the maximum benefit out of these days, the best way is to fast, and especially fast the day of Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ mentions uh, in a hadith reported both by Imam Muslim as well as Imam Bukhari that a person who fasts the day of Dhul Hijjah, Allah subha uh, the, the, the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous year of sins and will also forgive his coming year of sins. So for one day of fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives over 700, you know, over uh, th two years of sins are forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because of the day of Arafah, if we fast that day of Arafah. 
And just generally, fasting for the sake of Allah, hadith reported by Imam Bukhari as well as Imam Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says, anyone who fasts just one day for Allah's sake. There's nothing that, you know, he doesn't have to fast, it's an optional fast. Just for the sake of Allah, he said, you know what, I'm going to fast today. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep his face away from the hellfire for a distance covered by a journey of 70 years. So a person will be that, that much farther away from the fire of Jahannam for one fast that he does for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he fasts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep him that many years of journey away from the fire of Jahannam. And so these nine days being very meritorious nine days, especially the day of Arafah, it's something that we should look forward to uh, and fast in these nine days of the Hijjah. Also, something to do in these first nine days of the Hijjah are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To always be in a mode of remembering uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. Uh, hadith reported by Imam Ahmad and it's a Sahih Hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there's no days that are more beloved to Allah than actions that are done in these days. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> Advise the Sahaba that in these ten days, do a lot of say, do a lot of dhikr, much of tahleel, saying La ilaha illallah, much of takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, and much of tahmid, saying Alhamdulillah. In these ten days, increase in our uh, verbal uh, remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And it's actually mentioned also by Imam Bukhari in his footnotes that uh, Hadrat, uh, that Umar radiAllahu an and Abu Huraira radiAllahu an in these ten days. They would actually go out and they would recite takbir loudly amongst the people. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. And so Abu Bakr, uh, 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 Umar radiallahu an and Abu Hurair radiallahu an, they would go out into the marketplaces, they would go into the masjid, they would go into different places and they would recite this takbir loudly. Uh, and then the people would follow them. By hearing them, they would also recite these uh, the, these, uh, uh, these, these praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So it's a sunnah that we should re uh, revive You know saying takbir is something that we, we, we've shied away from Even on the day of Eid I remember just past Eid after Ramadan ended You know it was the morning of Eid we are, It's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To be in the recitation of the takbir La ilaha Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar And instead of being in recitation It was almost pin drop silent you know, where we were praying the Eid. And there were a few people reciting it. And then we have to wait for, you know, like Shaykh Hussein to come recite it on the mic or someone else to come recite it on the mic because we're all shy, we're embarrassed, or we don't know what to read. But this is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, not only in the place of Eid prayer, but before the days of Eid as well. Throughout these days to recite the takbir and to also, you know, encourage our children in the car, walking around, a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is one of, you can almost say, it's almost becoming a forgotten sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Whether it's because we're shy or we're embarrassed or because we don't know how to recite it, these aren't all excuses for us to leave a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So th we have a chance to revive a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ by reciting the takbir in these days, and especially on the day of Eid, going to the Eid Salah, encouraging our children, our families in the house. This is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in a hadith reported by Imam Tirmidhi, that a person who revives any aspect of my sunnah after it has gone away, after the ummah has left it, a person who revives that sunnah will get the reward of everyone who practices it after him. So if you revive a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by saying the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, in our houses, you know, amongst our families, with our friends, uh, we will get the reward of everyone who is saying it after us. So it's a sunnah that we should all try to revive, and something that we shouldn't shy away from, especially on the day of Eid. Also, actions to take care of in these 10 days, uh, obviously the Tahajjud Salah, the Qiyam al -Layl. You know, it, it's a blessed day altogether, so more importantly, even the nights. Uh, the nights we know, it, it's, it's a special time of Rahmah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when you look into the lives of the Sahaba, and we find that they had this love for the Qiyam al -Layl. And And nowadays the Qiyam al -Layl extends to almost 5 o'clock, past 5 o'clock. The Fajr Salah doesn't come in till very late. 
And so for those of us who wake up at 4.30 or 5 to go to work anyway, we have a very good opportunity to pray Fajr Salah in the Masjid as well as pray a quick two rakah of Qiyam al-Layl. It's a time of acceptance, a time of forgiveness, a time of rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for everyone, you know, we wake up anyway early to, you know, get the kids up early to go to school or for us ourselves, we want to get up and go to work. Salah, you know, the Fajr Salah, I believe it starts around 5.15, uh, maybe after 5.15. And so if we wake up before that, pray a two quick rakah of Qiyam al-Layl and ask Allah, open our hands. It's a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy descends. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, is there anyone awake to ask of me so I can grant them? And so this happens every night if we're awake, you know, and if we are, if we are awake and making prayer, the prayer is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, it's easier in the nights of the winter, obviously, because the nights are so long. And then uh, the more meritorious it is, because we, are in the, we, we will be in the first 10 days of the Hijjah, obviously something we want to take care of, maybe even jot it down, write it, and try to follow it in these 10 days, and try to reap those rewards and that rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last few things we should do uh, is obviously the Udhiyah, uh, Qurbani, sacrificing an animal, the Eid Salah, the Eid Day, take care, taking care of the Sunan, uh, you know, encouraging our children. It shouldn't be, you know, just uh, the Eid Day is special, but the days before it as well. Uh, in Ramadan, usually the whole month is special and it kind of leads up to the Eid, right? And so the Eid is big because the whole month we've been in this... Uh, you know, the tradition and the culture of fasting and seeing our family. And this Eid, usually it's nothing. It's just all of a sudden, hey, tomorrow's Eid. But we can make it the same spirit if we make these first 10 days, these blessed first 10 days, something special within it by encouraging our family to fast, you know, waking up early, reading some Quran, uh, reading some stories of the Sahaba, whatever it may be to have that spirit in our household. And the last piece of advice or an action that we should take part in in these first uh, nine, ten days of Dhul Hijjah is to, if we are not able to do so, and this is one of the advice that my teacher used to always give us, that say for example, and this was before Ramadan because we would go away for Ramadan, we would come home for vacation, so he would tell us that if you are unable to do many good things, for example, if you are unable in these nine days to fast, or if you are unable to read Quran or come to the Masjid, whatever it may be, he said for, for some example, for, for some reason, a person is unable to do any of this. He said the least they can do is stay away from sins and pray their salawat. And even that will be very blessed and very rewarding by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you stay away from committing all types of sins and pray your five times daily salah, that's the minimum that we should all do, especially in these, well, all throughout the year, but especially in these 10 days. These are 10 days of blessing, 10 days of forgiveness, 10 days in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the actions that we do. And so uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to act upon what has been said. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us and our families away from all harm. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us be a means of encouragement for our families in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, insha'Allah. Before I end, just two uh, announcements, in reg- uh, just one announcement in regards to uh, uh, our monthly halaqa. Insha'Allah, we will be having our monthly halaqa next Sunday, September 28th, uh, after the Asr Salah. Uh, Sheikh Imaduddin Abu Hijla, who is the Imam in Middletown, New York, uh, will be coming uh, and, and he will be our guest scholar. So again, Sunday, September 28th, he, uh, Sheikh uh, Imaduddin Abu Hijla will be here. Uh, it will be after the Asr Salah. Uh, he's our first guest speaker after a very long time. So please make sure we're here on time after Asr Salah on Sunday next week. Uh, it's very embarrassing. Sometimes you invite a scholar and there's nobody here for the salah, and he's supposed to speak, and there's like three people here. You know, he drove from an hour, an hour half away, and he comes here, and, and it's happened to me many times. I travel far to give a speech, and there's three, four people, and you know, and then people start coming when it's time for food. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, what, what's better is, inshallah, if we try coming on time after Asr Salah uh, a- on Sunday, uh, he's a very learned scholar. Uh, he's originally from Palestine. He's been in America for many, many years. He taught uh, you know, at universities across, this, the, across America, but he even taught at the MSA at Harvard. So uh, it's a blessing that we'll be, ha- we'll be having him. Uh, inshallah, everyone should make an intention to be here on that day. He will also be towards or near in those blessed days of the Hijjah. Uh, also, the timings for Salah till the end of the month, Fajr Salah is at 6 o'clock, so if someone's going to work, 6.30, 7, maybe drop by, pray Fajr 